Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, folks? Yep, your watch, your iPhone is correct. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, success, and a whole lot more. But these are the things that drive us. Talking to a lot of drummers today is no different. Of course, you might notice I'm missing my co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy's voiceover.com. He's doing a work pleasure thing on the East Coast, but I can handle this myself. I, I want this man to myself. This is long overdue. Uh, today's guest, top call recording drummer based in Nashville since 1987, hailing mm -hmm. from not Syracuse, outside of Syracuse, Liverpool, New York. I'm talking Five about our friend Wayne Killius. That's right. What's up, Wayne? How are you, man? Great, great, Rich. Thank you for having me on. Dude, cool. you know I'm what? I'm glad you're doing this. This is very, very good. The fun very thing good. is that, you know, you start something like this. A lot of people started podcasting COVID and they're like, yeah, this will be fun. I'm going to keep doing this. And they get about five episodes in. They're like, this is a lot of work. I'm out. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever met an artist who's enjoyed promoting themselves, you know, online. And yeah. That's like the one, you know, the. 99.9 oh i hate doing it but you, yeah you're right following through and doing it and doing it and doing it. the follow-up time and yeah well you know that now i'm going to bring something up and this will be a trip down memory lane because i started reading modern drummer magazine in the first couple of episodes uh issues 1977 and in the Billy eight, issue. <laughs> yes, man. Like, and then, and then they had this collect. It was like the first year. And then it was like the first yeah. five years. Oh, I love that magazine. When I was and I've been it. reading it ever since. And I'm telling you, it is just so funny. And when it arrives, you know, we read it cover to cover. We just put our lives on hold, go to the bathroom, sit on our throne, the other throne that men enjoy. And we read it cover to cover. <laughs> but but yeah. dude, I remember seeing there was like some sort of a drum solo competition that you were a finalist or you won or something. And Rush. Neil. Rush. So yes. if you were consuming this with your uh, ear holes and not your eyes, Wayne's rocking a, a, a Neil Peart, 2112. a 2112 so that he got at Hot Topic. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. In the Hickory Hollow Mall. It's it's a great, it's it's a funny story, really. You want? Me oh, to yeah. Well, go to that story. Tell me about the shirt. Okay. Yeah. 19 i moved here in january 3rd 1987 beautiful i think it was literally just not just a handful of months later that neil hurt did this drum solo contest yeah right man. where the whole premise i'm going to you know you you send in a two minute solo and there's going to be three winners first one's going to win that silver kit that's on 2112 yes you know the live all the world's a stage Second place is the black chrome Slingerland kit that Hemispheres, Farewell of Kings, albums and tours. You know, that, that was the pinnacle of my Russianist, by the way. First place was the red Tama. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was the red Tama kit. He was, I forget what he was switching to, but remember when Neil would switch drums. It's like, I, I love that red Tama kit. That was my favorite. I love that. Yeah, one. yeah, that yeah. was like the first place. So, anyhow, I, I, I'm living in Antioch. Renting one side of my duplex, I think. I think the whole thing is I was splitting with the roommate like three seventy five a month. So you know, I just got to town, and I think I must have been in some kind of. I think it was a top forty grant band because a guy yeah. came over and he left a PV board, a bunch of fifty sevens, and a Rev seven. So I had a, a a road gig. I think it was with who would that have been with early like Razzy Bailey or something like that. Some I don't know, but Opry Star. And before I had to go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to join this contest. What the hell? So I got for a day, I sat down there and I sort of composed this solo. And I, I didn't know what I was doing engineering wise. I, I put up a bunch of 57s on everything. One that Rev 7 had a little reverb. Push push record on a cassette yeah. and just did my, my solo. And I came in second place. Okay. So I won that kit, the black chrome Slingerland kit. Oh you my open God. up. I know hemispheres, Pharaoh the Kings. I got a picture, Rich, of it in my basement. And I still got it in, in Antioch because when they were delivered, they delivered it was like two kick drums and all the tom to ones in the snare drum. And I got his gold timbali and I got the Grace Under Pressure heads and one of these heads. You know the oh my god, yeah, yeah, heads. yeah. So 
And I think that was pretty much it. And the very, this is so true. The very first thing I did, and he had the he had the like blue hydraulic heads on him. Wow. He used hydraulic. You know, I don't know if you knew that crank. First thing I did when I set him up, very first fill I played was the opening of Xanadu. Well, it's not the opening, you know, like a little yeah. after the blah blah. blue, and it sounded just like it. I'm like, ah, that was so cool. It was mystical. Yeah. 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 So, but I wish I kept that kit for okay. Now that now that's a whole other story because because uh, you and I have talked about this and I've talked about it with our mutual friend Larry Aberman and oh, and yeah. I just remember that because because it was a little tear out vinyl. Yeah, there was a little floppy record. Yeah, like you know, and that's I remember that. I remember you for all these years and I go like I moved to Nashville. Wayne Kelly's he's part of the scene. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I moved here in 97. So you'd already been here for a decade. Yeah. So you didn't keep the drums. Do you, who owns them now? Like, okay. a you know, here's what the deal was. Think of this. I'm like 22 years old, right? Right out of Eastman. I, what, where's my head? I want to be the next Dave Weckl. Yeah. And I'm way into the electric band. Steve Big Jordan. Jordan. Step just, it. Step it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know that drumming drumming that's from my head so so i'm thinking i can't and it didn't neil's kit didn't have all the hardware it was it was an old um Slingerland, but he, he there's some shop in illinois this guy that was given it you know you had to sh i had to search down for some parts like some mounts and stuff uh so I, it wasn't really playable to me i wasn't a double kick guy and they were big you know they were 24s and so you know i'm like legs spread oh, i can't do this so i'm like i'm gonna be in the little capitalism i'm gonna sell this kit you know i'm gonna so the little I capitalist i love it yeah <laughs> and for so i sold the kit i think i sold it for sixty six hundred dollars now think of this this is 1988 because they delivered it like you know when the whole thing finally came um for a third of the money i bought the red cherry Yamaha Dave Wackel. Yeah. Remember that? Eight, oh, eight, I, um, yeah. I'm staring at it right now across the room. I got some uh, oh, that's funny. 80s that's funny. long turret cherry red recording customs. Yeah. And, and you know, Weckle with the mullet. Just, oh, yeah. I had Jeff Porcaro glasses and Dave Weckel hair. <laughs> yeah. I sort of got those now. Yeah, you do, man. Hey, has anybody uh, ever told you you look like a really, really younger, handsomer version of Stephen King? Yes. Not the handsome one, probably, but I get the Stephen King. Dude, shirt. it's it's I got glasses that are more that square thing. It's and scary. I really dude. look like it. Yeah. But um anyhow, so I sold that for a third of the money. I bought a new kitten and I lived off the rest. But yeah, that the third place winner, the one on all the world's a stage, I think it sold like within the last couple of years. Did you hear about that? Something ridiculous amount, like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something. Oh, yeah, this is pre-internet and all that, but yeah, who knows what that kit would be worth? If I... Yeah, we sell things. I mean, you know, you're at that age, and I mean, I, I I'm thinking about some gear that I sold, like kind of kicking my, kicking myself. But hey, man, the bills are due, you know, know. and you're, you're a struggling artist at that particular time. You were probably twenty three years old or something. Yeah, twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, that's a lot of money. But it was some. It was some doctor, some woman doctor, and her son, this long haired, lanky, like seventeen year old guy kid. That's what I sold them to. I wonder where they are now. Yeah. That's so long haired, lanky kid. If you are listening to this show right now, I want to <laughs> reconnect you with Wayne Kilius, who 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 became a son of a doctor call session drummer. Yeah, he cut his hair and went and became a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah, it so, probably is. So, dude, you're you are so accomplished. I want to talk about like you know. I want, of course, we got to go back and tell me about how you get into the drums and everything. But just to qualify you, just for the people if they have their head in the sand, these are some people that you've worked with: Steve Winwood, Lady Gaga, Luke Bryan, Lady A, Steve Forbert, Chris Stapleton, Guy Clark, Brady Seals, Toby Keith. God rest his soul. We just lost Toby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Neil McCoy, uh, Colt Ford, Colin Ray, Justin Moore, Big and Rich, Blackhawk, Blake Shelton, the McClimates. Oh, we both work with them. Sheree Austin, Chase Rice, Kenny Rogers. It's all over the map. Traditional country, Americana country, um, pop country, Southern rock. You do it all, man. It is all over the map, isn't it? It's all over the map and it's great. And you look very, very youthful. 
You know what I mean? I think we're men of a certain age. I, I think they're, you know, and uh, you look, I, I think it is due to, I could say clean living. I don't know what your lifestyle is like, but man, you do something you love every day. You've been part of this community. You know, that's so Dude, true. Rich. 87 to 97, 97 to 2007, 2007 to 2017. We're coming up on like just about 40 years of you playing yeah. the drums in Nashville. It's crazy. That's I mean, crazy. you got to pat yourself on the back. Do you ever just... Uh, you know, get yourself some pam some champagne, pop cork, and be like, "I did it." <laughs> I'm still trying to do it, whatever that is. So yeah, uh, once I feel like I'm I've done it, I'll I'll buy I'll buy the case of champagne. No, but you work every yeah. day, man. Well, every day. You know, it used to be. You know, how when you got here in the '90s, it was rocking. Uh, in the 2000s, but yeah, the things it's still pretty busy. I just got my hands in a lot of different things. Yeah. You know, my sensibilities when I first like that Neil thing, like I was saying, I wanted to be. When I first got to town, I was actually playing in the symphony because my the reason I moved here, I'll give you a little background. Yeah, um, with the Eastman thing and everything. Yeah, with Eastman School of Music, got my degree. But my girlfriend at the time's violinist and she decided to take the audition for the Nashville Symphony. And I remember that she was about to, oh, I don't think I'm ready. I don't want to do this. And, and I'm like, oh, you should start taking some auditions. You should. And she got the job. So I followed her down. I mean, it had nothing to do with the music. It was like, okay, she's here. I'll go check out Nashville. Because, you know, Nashville, really, you can go buy some boots in the country, you know, a cowboy. You're like, what? Yeah, what? Nashville? Nashville? Country music? I didn't really listen to country music. Not at the time, yeah. No, no. So... So I moved here and then I you should, you know, started getting gigs and just society gigs or jazz gigs and subbed in the symphony and went from there. I love it. So who, uh, I'm trying to think. So while at Eastman, was yeah. that uh, John Beck? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Beck. The new instructor, Mike Burrett, was my uh, uh, practice roommate. You got ah. like at Eastman, you, you know, you, you got, there's practice about three guys, two or three guys shared a practice room. It's cool. Larry had his own practice room. Actually, yeah. Second Is it really? Fucker. <laughs> he worked it out. Like when I was at, no, you could, it, we got an explicit rating now. Um, we, uh, you know, when I was at Texas Tech University before I went to North Texas, I had my own practice room and I was, people were like, how did he pull that off? Man, I just asked. I said, you know, ask and you shall receive, man. I was like, yeah. look at, I will use this thing. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So you move here, you're doing the classical work, you're doing you're doing some uh, you know, some society stuff. My first job in Nashville, moved here on a Tuesday, Saturday, I'm working with a guy named Paul Ross and the Cadillacs. You ever work with Paul I guess Ross? Yes, I did, Paul. I was almost gonna mention his name. That's yeah. so funny. Dude. Yes. So was that the society job you did? Yes, that was one of them. Oh my Bo God. Thorpe. Does that name ring a bell? Sure. Bo yeah. Thorpe's orchestra, that retired general or something. Yeah. And it's there was a Nashville out. Jazz Orchestra. There was a Tennessee Jazz Orchestra, oh, really? and there was the whole, um, uh, you know, what was the the uh, little jazz bar over there in Green Hills? It was like JC's dinner pub. jazz. JC's Pub. JC's Pub, and then Wasn't F Scotts. It? Remember F Scotts? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I hear a funny story. Very very first time I booked my own gig in Nashville. You know, it was at JC's Pub. It was a little jazz quartet. So I told the guy, I don't know what to call it. Just call, you know, it was Wayne Killey's quartet. So I get the Nashville scene. Like, hey, my name may be in the Nashville scene. I got a gig coming up. Open up the Dwayne Callias Quarter. <laughs> oh, Wayne Killey's qu quartet. It was spelled. And on, you know, Wednesday night, the Dwayne Callias Quarter. Every uh. word was spelled. Every day it was spelled. Wrong. It was just so. I, I wish I kept that. Oh man, that would be great. That's like keeping the check for that's got like a one cent residual yeah, exactly. on it. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I remember that club. That was there. That was one of the. That was really the only jazz club, pretty much. Then F. Scotts. And I was playing with Lori and Roger too. They started the whole jazz workshop. Ah, okay. Lori Meacham and Roger. And yeah, and, Larry, and Larry's been doing a lot of that. Larry, we're talking about you, man. You know, Larry was on the podcast a long time ago. Yeah, he is doing a lot of that. He came down. He said, "Do you know these guys?" Heck yeah, I know him. I, I, was, I hooked him up, but he just did it himself. He's a go getter. And what I love about Larry is that he's working with people. I mean, I've been here twenty seven years, and he's working with people I have never met. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. dang, Larry. Yeah, I think he, the guy, he, his neighbor who told him about the house he bought. Yes, which he bought it. 
about five years ago or something. Who who is this guy? Is he sort of has a I guess he has a career has been working and maybe hooked him up. I met him at a barbecue and forgot his name. Yeah. But I will re meet him at some point, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember who it is either. I suck with names. Well, more caffeine. And more caffeine. You know what? I drank so much coffee today, I gave myself the squirts, man. I've got to chill out. I'm on I'm on the uh, <laughs> I had some new blinds put in today and I had to be up quite early. The guy shows up. I'm like, this could take four hours. I'm just going to pound this coffee. Before I knew it, I drank like a pot, of, at least a pot of coffee. Pots. Yeah, pots. I, over, I overdid pots. it. Fresh yeah. pots. Fresh pots. That's what it was. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, you're doing great, right? Well, I know well, we shouldn't talk about you. Or we're not supposed to talk about you. Or can we talk about you? You got well. Work. No, this is all about shining a light on you and, and following your career path. And hopefully these kids that want okay. to move to Nashville or they want to monetize their creativity or just any like little nuggets that we can give them along the way is really the reason um, for yeah. the podcast. But you're highly yeah. accomplished. I mean, you basically you love drums. You got really good at it. You invested in yourself. You're an Eastman graduate. You take the chance moving to a brand new town. Mm -hmm. I love that it was for a woman because I just had Pete Abbott on the show and, and I was like, how do you end up in Oslo, Norway? And he's like, every American that ends up in Oslo, Norway is there because they chase one of these beautiful Norwegian women. And I'm like, and so like you sense. did, yeah, you did the yeah. same thing. But so yeah. how did you make the transition from being a classical jazz snob to like, okay, I'm going to embrace this Americana music? It's, well, you know, it's just... That's what was around wow, I happening as far as yeah. sessions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the first places where I started having any kind of consistent, consistent session work was, mm -hmm. uh, you remember Texana? Kind of yeah, awesome. over in Antioch, man. I'm like, but Hickory Hallam Mall. What? No, no, he was. Oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking of a restaurant called Texana, which was by the Courtyard Cafe on Bell Road. About. Right. Yeah, he turned it. Well, he he, uh, he had he set up. He started at his house. That's where I started working. And the very first band, like the band he would use, was Jason Sellers was playing bass. Jeff King, Chip Davis was playing keyboards. Ah. Then I met Buddy Hyatt, who I'm working with in a little bit here. I love that Buddy Hyatt. Yeah, say hi Buddy for me. Buddy Hyatt, Boudreau. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing one of his, you know, 38 songs in one day. And 38 songs in six <laughs> hours. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I'm not lying, but we need to talk about that clip, that pace that scares a lot of people that are even very, 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 very good at their craft. They see how fast we do things and they're like, you got to do this every day. Oh, my God, your mental power, your prowess of your mental state has to be very focused. You know, it does wear you out. It can wear you down. Your brain uses a lot of your energy. You know, it you does, man. Sad, you're really struggling, trying to really think of something. You may feel exhausted after. It's a, it's like you ran around the block ten times. So I know, like, and you've been doing it for forty years, dude. That's incredible. Yeah, well, yeah. that's why I'm always exhausted. <laughs> so but, you are a caffeine guy. You're a coffee guy. Yeah, Hello. I wasn't for a long time. Yeah, until about ten years ago. Yeah, I never drank coffee. Wow. I you kind of fell in love with it. You got the bug. Mm -hmm. Juan Valdez got in your psyche. Yeah. Um, okay, so I interrupted your story about Texana. No, no, yeah, that, that was that. And uh, then sort of that crew morphed into the ruckus room. I'm just naming yeah. Sergio Studios guys that are in Nashville, were in Nashville. Yeah. It's still there. Ruckus room is still there. Actually. Yeah, and that's no, where the one was I was. Ab, I'm sorry, it was Abtrax. It, 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 oh, it, yeah. It's abstract. Then abstracts. Jamie, you know, engineer went to Jamie so Tate. Still doing his thing. You yeah. track. It's where it tracked your songs, dude. When I was doing my five years of songwriting, I was lucky enough to have you as a drummer on one of my songs. And hey, that three-hour session, we did five or six songs. Oh yeah, which was standard. Yeah, I know. You killed it. Thank you. <laughs> The song never saw the light of day, like 99% of songs, but you guys played your hearts out. Yeah. Of yeah. 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 But do you write anymore? You've been writing? I did it for five years, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as opposed to when I was in town, like 10 years before that, I would take as many sessions as I could on Monday and Tuesday before I got on the bus Wednesday nights. And then I said, all right, for five years, let's try to 
figure this craft out, get some intellectual property yeah. together. I chased it and it was really fun, but very exhausting to try to yeah. write that next three chord tale that has to fit into a very specific box. Right. Very challenging. It Are you doing it? Are you doing some on, in your free time? I've done some, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's a full time job. Well, yeah, it absolutely is. If yeah. you really want to break into that, you know, getting your song, you know, you meet artists. I want to just pitch my songs. What camp are you in? Who are you writing with? You know, are you do you know any of these artists? Do you know any writers that are are getting cuts? I mean, I don't know about you, but every cut I ever got was because I wrote with the artist. Exactly. I got That's actually one cut. This girl, Robin, you probably don't know, but Robin English. She was I remember signed, Robin English. Yeah, yeah. She was yeah. signed to Sony for a second. It was right before the big shakedown with Sh Sony and the Dixie Chicks, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. she was signed, and we, she cut a song I wrote. Record wasn't released. Hey, that's killer, man. You know, it's uh, it's good. What's his name? Um, GML, George Massenberg, engineered it. Nice. That was cool. GML, <laughs> right? That's, isn't that the name of his, his EQ? Oh yeah, um, I'd have to talk to like Tony Moore or he, you know, or somebody like that that knows all the plugins. And are you are you a plugin? Are you do you mix at all? And use Pro Tools? No, I'm not. A, no, I'm I'm mostly like a performance and education. So like the like the other side of my thing is just a deep love of teaching and then trying to affect people in that positive way, whether it's one on one or the clinics or the master classes. I just always kind of took that from like the Greg Bissonettes of the world. I was just like, Hey, I'm on the road anyways. Let's go to the drum shop during the day. Um, I, was, I always thought it's great how, how you put out effort and, and you're, you're not just sitting back waiting for the, you're not a guy who waits for the phone to ring. Person. Oh yeah. I wish I could. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people well, that can. are just, you, you can't, can't really. I guess you're right. Yeah. I mean, you can, but you know, it's all about, People knowing who you are and and you were brands in a sense. Right? You are, man. Well, you are. You're a big brand, man. You're a big boy brand. So, um, okay. So you're you know you flirted with the songwriting. You'll still do it from time to time. You got that big cut. Um, your resume's all over the map here. What what gear are you using these days, man? What's your main kit? Are you finding yourself on mostly house kits or a lot of house kits? Yeah, honestly. And you know, I'll bring the power the snare bands, and the whatever your snares, your pedal, your cymbals. I sold my number one kit. There's my old, this is my old snare drum cartridge. Oh, yeah, it? that's a nice fiber case, isn't it? Yeah, old school. Dude, Russ Paul told me about the guy. The ET, I guess he passed. He made it. Yeah, I was about to throw it out. My wife said, Take it to the office. And this is the coolest. I mean, it's on wheels, right? We yeah, it up, we got all the storage inside. It's like a great table. <laughs> I think it looks kind of also like uh, you know, uh, Greg Morrow has kind of like a beefed yeah, up does. fiber yeah. case. Yeah, fiber, yeah. not fiber skin, but like pre Humesenberg technology. Yeah, you set this thing up, you know, you got your stack. Oh, yeah. it always usually I'm a one snare guy, man. I'm a one snare drum. Keep know, it up the whole session, tune it up, tune it down. Generally, because I you know, it depends on the drum, but generally, yes. Tune it up, tune it down. You know, the fatness. Take a chart, snare, you tune it. I first discovered that from Paul at, at years ago, County Q. It's like, oh, man, it's so flappy. This ain't going to be good. You go in, you know, in the boot, in the show room, it's like, wow, it's fat. So he just takes an old number chart, sticks it on top, no tape or anything? He did it something with, um. he had a dead ringer, but I just took, you know, a chart. Went like that. You detune it. Sounds freaking great. Engineers love it. So are you doing anything where you tune the snare drum to a resonant note of the key, or do you just kind of sit and say, that's right, Nick, that feels good right there. Let's go with that. Just like a feel. If I'm working with Kenny Oyster, you know Kenny? Sounds at Direct Image? No, I don't think so. May yeah, maybe, maybe. Because he's famous for that. Oh, the, the snare, it's not, you got to tune and get the right key, but he's right. Yeah, so... Working with him, it's sort of, uh, I started paying attention to that some. So, yes, if there's a ring, um, it's better to be sympathetic to the key, of course. Yeah. You know, but it's, 
you 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 play one guy engineer is like, oh it's not ringing i'm taking off i love it wide open you go into the next studio it's ringing way too much you know so it's yeah. all it, it's what they want sometimes same but, drum different rooms different people yeah. um yeah i have one of those little tune bots i love it it's a great trick they're they're so yeah. affordable as you can tune your drums to a to a specific pitch so it will it, it you know even with all the color in a drum it'll read as close as it can to a you know a, huh. a pitch so if in the it's the key is c i try to get the snare drum tuned to either c e or g in the triad somewhere yeah, right. close to it and it's sure. really quick to do and i've noticed a lot of people are like hey man that snare drum is sitting great it's almost like self-preservation because you know how a lot of us are just getting sample replaced or not even replaced they're just adding a sample to the snare drum so i'm like i'm gonna try to have a fighting chance of keeping the, my entire sound that day but usually they're adding it a sample yeah yeah or mm -hmm. replacing Heck, i replay them i track drums and if i'm mixing something which i'm i'm not a mixer i'm reluctantly to going down that hole because when you start working with stuff you know best thing i ever did honestly for my career in a way it's not exactly drumming but it's learn pro tools dude yes i had that office at omni studios for like seven years so i was in and for the first two years, I'm like, I just didn't want to do it, intimidated. But I had these engineers walking by me every day. So finally I said, hey, how do you do this? And I, I learned. So that's why we production. So, yeah, we can do all my stuff, all the stuff, vocals, mix everything here. But generally, I I, I mean, I'm just replacing kick drums usually. Mm -hmm. Per se, snares somewhat depends. And it depends. Most records, I think, are replaced. It seems like these engineers, yeah. because I'm, mean, you know, Ryan Gore or what's it, I can't even think, Jim. Oh, yeah. um, Jim Cooley worked for them for a decade. Yeah, cool, cool. What's up, Jim? Yeah, Jim became a big old star, man. He had an office over there at uh, um, Black River. And yes, I, I had a production up. company for like 10 years with the guys in my band. And he mixed it. He tracked everything and mixed everything. So. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, strong relationship with Jim. Jimbo. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He is. He makes a couple of things. And it's some of these guys like Jim, I think, they just get so busy that, you know, I'm just, I'm just taking the dive. I'm doing it myself, just learning. You, you can't help it. That's you know, great. Here's something like, well, what does this do? God, well, how do you? But engineering is the biggest mind F in the world. <laughs> it's, well, if I do this, it's, you think chess is hard. If I do this, it it's affects gonna, this. this. You fix that. That's gonna wait. That alters that. This. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's good know. that you're 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 fearless. It's not for the faint of heart. You're going down, going yeah. down that path. And yeah, you know, engineers walking it changes by your every playing day. too, Rich. What's that? I didn't mean to interrupt, but it changes no. your playing. Oh, you, I'm sure. Concept, as you know, you know, you, you realize what you want to hear when mm -hmm. you're mixing and when you're tracking. Even for somebody else, it's like you know what? I don't need to do all this because they're gonna. It's not. You're playing for the song, but you simplify a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's what Nashville taught me. I just tell everybody, hey, the drums get bigger, the cymbals get bigger, I play less, and I work more. Yeah. It's the yeah. strangest thing, right? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. But with the sample replacement, my one beef is it could be a weapon in the wrong hands because sometimes you'll get a kick and snare drum replacement, and then they won't put samples on the toms, but then... Oh, you yeah. got those strong transients on the kick and snare, and then the toms are like ducked down in the mix. So, like, gak, 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 you know, and they're just not quite big enough in the mix. So, actually, when you're tracking, I have that. I tell engineers all the time, turn up the toms. Yeah. You, know, you ever notice you play a fill and you go in, it sounds weird, but well, you're not hearing the toms. All you hear is, da, 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 da. yeah, you go. So, it's like, dude, crank, you know, crank it all up. Yeah. So speaking of Tom's, I was at Drum Paradise yes yesterday. I don't know who does your cartage, but I was over I, there and I used you, Harry for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so um I'm talking to some of the drummers over there about, hey, when did this whole thing happen with the, you know, the tea towels are back, you know, in a major way. The chamois with the little clips and like, you know. Hey, yeah, the the uh office clips yeah yeah right. i've always got them i've always got them ready to go but it's not the first thing i really think of i was like when don't we want the drum to just breathe and then we could you know but apparently it's a it's like a expectation now we're almost like the guys are setting up everyone's kits with the tea towels on them now huh. 
I've showed up dates, you know, yeah, right. When I'm using a house kit and there's tea towels, I'm usually just like, oh, that's sort of cool, but I usually just take them off. Take them off. But you know, so you don't, you don't get engineers stuff. saying, hey, man, that's not dry enough. Uh, I've done that. Yeah, of yeah. course. You know, going for that Ringo thing or something. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. It's, it's, it seems like it's an expectation. To do. Yeah. It's the new trend, you know? So I showed up to a session exactly one year ago and I had my, my DW kit, you know, very high fidelity drums, 13, 16, 18, big boy drums wide oh, yeah. open, just a little gap on the edge or whatever. And the engineer was like, I love how brave you are that you're just coming in and have it. I was like, what are you talking about? Then we want drums to sing. And he's like, well, I think we're going to have to put the towels on a man. So we, oh, I was like, all right, you know? Yeah, that's different. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Now, what is that go-to snare drum? Is it a superphonic, Black Beauty? Steve Ferroni Pearl. The Pearl Ferroni, it, which is a it, Black Beauty copy, right? Right, pretty much, pretty much. And it's not for, I guess I am not really a gear gear guy like some guys. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I've gotten calls, in fact, about that Neil Peart thing. People want to talk about it, and I'm like, finally... You know, there's web pages devoted to him, so I don't really care about that. Um, so there's there's great drums out there. They go, Hello snares. I played one of those yesterday. It sounds oh, great. Yeah. yeah, you can play one of the or what's that other one? Uh some funny name like Yeah, Andy over at the um Nashville Drum Supply the house, which is who makes them, right? Yeah, there and you could and if you want, he's got like this thing where you can you know how you would like drink wine and like paint? He's doing a thing where you can go in and build your own snare drum. Oh, really? Like a thing. It's like an experience. Oh, no kidding. Isn't that kind of cool? You take a date, let's build snare drums. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a girlfriend who goes to that, keep her. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so what it what it not to be too personal, but how long have you been married? What does your wife do? Is she in the arts? No, my wife, when I met her, she was working uh in reservations at US Air for like she was there for twelve years. Um, and she, after that, we just, we just bought some real estate, you know, uh, bought a, a rent. Well, she bought a, the home before we were married. She bought the home in Silver Park. I bought this rental place in Green Hills. And so she started managing that. We had kids and we were fortunate. I was making enough where she could stay home and raise the kids, which I, I liked. Nice. You know, I think it's better if you're able to do that, but. Yeah, you know, there's no one way that's better than another. But yeah, so she's. Um, do your kids yeah, have the bug, the music bug, or are they? Do they? Uh... My daughter was a really good clarinetist, and it got her a full scholarship. Look at that! She got over the break. Because it was a Haslam scholarship at UT, and UT it's the Haslam. You know that he founded Pilot. That, uh, yeah gas station convenience yeah. store and our what was he a governor i always get a confused senator haslam mm. it was his dad but the the patriarch and matriarch just they're in their 90s they call and they he they call and say you all when they whittled it down to the seven that get the scholarship or whatever they call her in the the grandma or the wife said well we i just love that you're into music so we picked you you know so it had something to do with it but she, you know, she's just moved to Providence and she's working for the National Wildlife Fund, I think. Providence, Rhode Island? Yeah. Nice. Her boyfriend's at Brown. He's a cool guy. I like him. All oh, right. You got grown up kids, man. That's and amazing. My son, I'll brag about him. He's 22. Yeah. He's at Georgia Tech and he's a swimmer, D1 swimmer. 6'2, oh, wow. Rich. Take off. Oh, yeah. He's just like, just ripped. Like, so he, but yeah, talk about your, um, your grocery bills, man. That's a lot of caloric right. intake right there. Protein, you know? Yeah. Protein. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, but he is, I don't know where he got, he is just, a, never had to tell him to do anything. He just, he'd be getting up 5.30 a.m. to swim in the winter. You know, it's like, oh. Yeah, he's just self-motivated. He doesn't have as much musician in him. <laughs> he's, he's highly self-motivated. Yeah. yeah Musicians get up seven hours later. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly or go to bed like well that time yeah are you a night owl because you got to get up and get you sounds know, yeah but generally if if left to my own devices i end up there yes if if like i have no schedule i'll i'll tend to stay up late you know you can't 
it's like there's nothing else going on. This is great. I can do what I want to do and you just get into it. Yeah. Especially if you get working on a mix or something, you know, it's like yeah, hours could go by and you're like, yeah, it's 4 a.m. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, like I said, you're incredibly youthful and young looking. So what is, uh, are you doing something with your diet? What do you do to burn calories? You get exercise. What's your fun? Oh, you what you not a I lot. I think I just, my hair isn't gray yet, I guess, too bad. So, dude, yeah, old. you were, yeah. So it's like people think I look young. Great. You know, I'm not. I don't, I, I'm starting to feel a little old. We're all at the same age. How old are you? I'm I'll 50, be 54. I'm 59. Yeah. Yeah, man. Incredible. At 60 is when they, all my friends are telling me, you wait till you hit 60, you're just going to start stiff, getting stiff and all that stuff. You know, but you look at, uh, you look at some of our heroes that are like, you know, like the Carmine Appleseys or the Kenny Aaron. Kenny's going to be 72. He looks 52. Right. I know. I've, exactly, or Gad even looks. I mean, he's Gad not, is a, I think, isn't Gad 80? He may be close. He's youthful. He's positive. He's snappy dresser. He's got tattoos. I mean, he's just a. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So it can be done. Okay. Well, you're just, you know, you just got it. You're just natural. You're not going out of your way to do anything, but it's all working. It's good, yeah, man. It's <laughs> working. Yeah. So I love it. So uh, now you move in here in 87, 10 years yes. before, 10 years before I did. Mm -hmm. um, you, we've had, that's four decades as a session drummer. So what, um, what changes have you seen 80s to 90s, 90s to 2000s? Sure. I know what some of them are, but I know some of the listeners want to be like, well, what is that all about? What are what have you seen? Well, you know, when we showed up, well, maybe just on the fringe, there was still some two-inch tape when you were starting, right? Yeah, because Tommy Wells, Jerry Croon would let me tag along to some of their sessions, and I swear they were cutting to tape. Yeah, I'm sure. Even in the late nineties, there's still some leftovers. But yeah, it was well, that was the biggie, two inch tape. Yep. As far as punching and you know, waiting for stuff or the ADATs came out, you know, yep. waiting for them to align and all that stuff. Um <clears throat> you know, the what has changed? Obviously the styles have changed. It's a mm. big, you know, that's more it's become more the shuffles and train beats have taken the backseat to Yeah. 808 yeah, kicks yeah. you know it's four chords in a loop not three chords in the truth but four chords in a loop Haven't not three dude that's okay. the title of the episode right there right there uh, thank <laughs> you that's gold from wayne it's Killian. not mine i didn't make that up but it is a good good title that's um three chords well, in a loop. I, I was one of the earlier guys with the sampler I was working with Jerry Tashwa. He's a vibist, right? He's yeah, like, man. Yeah. Ever, yeah. Right? And he got a mallet cat. It's like when the first time when they first came out. So he said, You should get one of these drum cats. So I'm talking, what, 89, 90, maybe? I got a drum cat. I got a drum cat in 90. Yep. Yeah. So I started going that route. That's 900, 950, 1000, 1100, and got way into sampling. So then I started getting a lot of work that way. Where it's like, I felt like I'm not really playing drums, but, yeah, um, you know, just plugging in and going out. I got my own little uh, eight, you know, DI rack and that whole deal. Yeah. And uh, that, that was sort of, in fact, where I got that, where I started that, Rich, uh, or started actually getting work from samplers, I meant this guy... I don't know. This, I went to, I was trying to buy a D112 microphone for my kick drum because I wanted to be like Weckle. He had his own mics. Go to the studio where there, there was a studio. I show up in Music Row. Yeah, I'd like to buy the kick. And I met this engineer. We started talking. He's like, uh, yo, you have an S1000, which is 30, I think it was like 32 seconds of stereo sampling at 16 bit memory that cost $2,000. Ouch. And it was floppies, $2, right? It was hard floppies. The, the well, well, the, that's what the, the if you upgrade, if you max out the S one thousand, which was thirty two megs, was two thousand dollars. Ouch! For that memory, I mean, that, you know, but you could do, like I said, you could do. Well, you could do longer. I forgot. It was a some length of time you could do stereo sample. So he was working on vocals. He's like, you know, can you tune vocals? And I'm like, I, I don't know. 
but he'd we tried it and it worked he'd feed me the vocal track i'd record it in stereo and you know sampled and use the wheel and as it was going down if there's a bad note i'd sit there and do this real time so i could actually change where it comes in you know it's like editing like what we do now very easily but manually oh and that same day God. it's funny because that same day jeff coffin was there i met jeff yeah. he's doing really well now he's a great guy great yeah player. he's in a little band called the dave matthews band little combo yeah little play wedding project yeah so uh when we started you know jamming we had our head well our heads were in the same place back then jazz fusion yeah man um but so then i got into the electronic scene and for i remember there was a there was a you know hmm, should i just start programming man should i just start doing that be the program guy be because who was doing that? There was a guy, Dave. What was his Lawbaugh? Does that Dave mean? Lawbaugh. Everybody told me that's the guy to go to. You got to buy your your Akai MPC sampler and then go to him and get the training. I hadn't heard his name in a while. I don't even know if he were. Yeah, I haven't heard it in quite a while. Hope he's all right. Hope he's around. I know. Yeah. I know. But like listeners, I mean, if you know Dave Lawbaugh, will you let us know if he's around? Yeah. If he's all right, Dave Lawbaugh. But so I started doing some of that. But when yeah. I started doing sessions, it was with that, with uh, the cat at this place, Texana. Then I moved to uh, Berry Hill and he got a kit. But it's just, you know, you just want to play with as many people as you can. Right. Yeah. So what, was there a road sound. gig that came along? Like that was the first thing so you could pay your bills? Or? I really did. I didn't. I, no. Which is funny, right? Because you never did guys, the road. That's amazing. No, but it, like a lot of guys, you know, you're working with. Yeah, I did Mel Tills for 20 years or whatever. I, I never did that. Yeah. I just, well, I, I was four. I, I was 22 years old, moving here, and had no insurance. You know, had a my dad gave me the, the beat up Chevy. My bill sounds like a country song, anything, man. Yeah, like zero. Yeah, I'm a kid, so I did. You know, I was fortunate to have that going. So I didn't have to, but I not that I wouldn't have, mm -hmm. but I just never was asked. That's interesting. So you stayed in town, played around yeah. town, and was doing the studio, and you were navigating the technology. Exactly. Um, were there any mentors? Like, like I said, like I met Tommy Wells and Jerry Croon, and I took their studio drumming class. And um, Eddie Bears heard my little cute little press kit and he threw me some work and lonnie wilson threw me a little bit of work and then it was like good luck kid you know welcome to nashville like yeah, like right. they helped me out a little it's cool yeah. but they were like you gotta you gotta mix yeah, and mingle I, and I, I called eddie we, we became yeah. phone buddies and i'd go hang out at sessions okay. but he he told me because you know what i don't really recommend people it's not my thing because and i understand 100 well it could go horribly wrong <laughs> exactly exactly if you don't right you get some new guy. He could be a great player, but he could simply not know how to read that part of the chart and mess the whole session up. So you can't just throw. But he was cool. Um, I always appreciated him for that, for letting me just hang. Amazing. Like, sitting like watching Conway Twitty session or, you know, whatever. I don't even remember. Probably about 10 different sessions. I'd, and I'd, I'd bring him floppy. I got a new sound because he had an S900 give him a sound and yeah he, he was playing those Remo Remo drums remember those? yes like, I small. had that same kit that yeah the, 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 it was acousticon which was basically yeah all of the wood shavings or something that fell onto the floor <laughs> they would take them they would compress them glue them together and that became the shell the so it was a very, shaving kit <laughs> it was very affordable and very light Eddie is in a gear I mean he's like Rick Malkin his tech for forever yeah, he, uh, right, he doesn't care. I'd say, what is he playing? No, he doesn't care. He just shows up and plays. And if they're around, and again, I know what he's meaning, you yeah. know, because there's so many variables in a studio. You hit a drum, how you hit it, the head, the drum, the, the room, the mic, the free. It's just so many variables. So, yeah. And when you walk away, there's, it's out of your hands. So it's almost like, you know, I learned this the six years that I studied acting in Los Angeles. It was just, it, it let the laughter begin, but I just, it was something was a calling. I had to do it. And yeah. uh, they always say, you know, go, you prepare as much as humanly possible. You go in, you leave everything on the table, you walk out, and then you forget about it. You move on with your life. And if the phone rings, fantastic. It's almost the same way with drumming. It's like you go in and you bleed passion, you leave your, every bit of it on the drum throne. And 
then you walk away because who knows how it's going to end up in the mix. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. You don't ever know. Yeah. It could be, a, it could be you know, turned into a master and become a hit. It yeah. could be, you know, uh, probably 95% of the stuff I played on I've never heard. You know, I don't know what the number So is. you're not a, uh, well, you know, Johnny. I never heard. I mean. Yeah. Like, you, you know, don't make it a point. Like, Johnny Depp apparently says that he never watches dailies and he's never seen any film he's ever acted in, which I find hard to believe because hard to believe he's got such a huge body of work. But, yeah. you know, even this podcast, like I told my podcast producer, I'm like, hey, I listen to each show two times. The first one I, I listen to for enjoyment and flow to see how my hosting skills are. And then the second one I listen They're for tech for man. Thank you, buddy, for technicalities and anything that was kind of like somewhat inappropriate that we need to edit, which is usually it's mostly warts and all. And so I listen for the technical side of things on the second pass. And so we learn so yeah. much by listening back to ourselves. Oh, I know. I you know? know it's hard. It's hard. It's like no one likes to hear their voice on tape. Yeah, it's hard to hear your playing on tape. Yeah. And, it, and it's hard to disassociate from it. It really well. That's really what I mean. To you, have you ever heard something? It's like, oh, that's that feels good. Who's that drummer? You realize it was it was you. That How has happened. Time. I was like, that that sounds kind of from this guy. Kind of sounds like man. We have the same vocabulary, and, and, and you sort of liked it. Then when as soon as you know it's you, you're like, oh, wait a second, it doesn't feel as good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. Age, man. It's mental. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah. in that same vein, Wayne. Um, there's got to be this body of work that you have from over the years. Some of the stuff that's become masters. Do you have a, a track or two that's like, man, that really holds up. And I'm proud of that one, man. You know, there's a track on, I think it's the first or second. I can't remember. Big and rich record. Oh yeah. And it's like a ballad. And it's that fat snares when I was getting into that. And that always felt really good. That, that track. That, so it's that, on the that, yeah, first big and rich record. Well, uh, let me. Uh, gosh, I can't. First or second? It was just something about this moment. Something in this moment. It was a big hit. It was like a mid-tempo ballad. No, I think this was earlier than that. Earlier than that, yeah. If you saw the, uh, if I saw the credits, I remember the name. What's the name of it? Well, text me later I, when you I, figure I, it out. I'll put it in the it, show notes. <laughs> you know what I did that was really fun, Rich? What I got to experience. I got to be Rich Redmond for a, a show. The, you know, animalizing I would, yeah i would love you know we all want to play rock and roll i did this thing did you ever know mitch malloy by absolutely Jay? heck yeah you knew mitch yeah okay so mitch oh long story short he calls me up after eddie van halen passed away did i tell mm. you about this i don't know if i've mm -mm, seen no he goes well i'm ready to do because because rip mitt the story with the mitch is and i believe him in a lot you know it's Anyhow, he, after Sammy Hagar left, they wanted him in the band. And he sort of, it didn't work out because David Lee Roth came back at the awards and Mitch was trying to break into Nashville, had a record deal. Worst thing you can do back then is say, oh, I'm rock and roll. You know, it's a death knell to a country artist, right? And yeah. Mitch, pretty boy guy, but great guy. And I remember tracking with him. He just called me for a session. He's like, hey, I should get my buddy Eddie to play on this. Eddie? Eddie Van Halen. I'm thinking, yeah, right. But he was offered that gig, but Wynn Jackson was managing him. Ah. Like, you remember him? So anyhow, he had history there. Um, so he called me to do a, a tribute show, and he got Pete Thorne on guitar, who's this great guitar player, has a odd, you know, does the YouTube thing. And we did one gig. You should check it out. All I'm right. Proud I'm proud of that. I'm now, like, when, now, when and where was this? This was about... Two years ago in Destin, Florida, just go Mitch Malloy Van Halen YouTube and it'll come up. Mitch Malloy Van Halen. Yeah. Love Listen, it. But here's the thing, Rich. Here's what I, I'm proud of. The sounds. Dig it. Check. I, I put this huge kit together. I mean, half of it's for show. Gong. You know, fire extinguisher. <laughs> and why he had it. You know why Alex no. had it? No. Because he used to light his gong on fire. Oh, right? there, there you go. Yeah. yeah. This is back when they were playing like in backyards and stuff. I think he had a gong um, and was doing that. So, yeah. So that was a blast. But it, oh, it, yeah. it didn't turn out because COVID happened and Pete had other uh, uh, commitments. And, you know, the whole tribute thing, 
it's a money. It's a money thing. When you're a tribute act, your value sort of goes down, no matter how good you are. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there, though. Oh, my God. The, of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bro. faux, the, you know, the Beatles, the faux four, and, you know, they, 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 they really, they dress up, they do the thing, man. But you're right. Yeah. I was almost going to do this, the, the Queen one with Mark Martell. They called oh. me to do that, and Mark went with a guy he knew or something like that. Okay. Hey, you're getting these rock and roll calls, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's sort of like you get in that rock and roll camp. Anyhow, I, I love that. That was a blast. That was a blast. I really wish. I'm sort of bummed that it didn't, didn't turn out to be more gigs. And Mitch doesn't want to do it unless, and I don't blame him. He wanted to do it right. He wanted to do whole production, big show, not just like be a tribute, another, you know, tribute schlocky band. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna... good ones. They're really good. Ones. Yeah. That was fun. Now I I I remember meeting Mitch through uh Victor Broden bass player. I, I don't know if you ever worked with Victor Broden. He oh, yeah. is um Swedish. Swedish. And uh yeah, and uh just a, kind of a staple of the Nashville scene and just kind of recently in the last 5 years moved to LA, but they are super super tight and uh yeah, Mitch I uh, learned that he loved 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 Mickey Curry. That was his Oh yeah, he does. model drummer, you know. He does their friends. Yeah. In fact, Matt Who's the drummer and lover boy? Matt Frenette. Yeah, he was going to do the Van... He wanted to do the Van Halen thing. But Mitch called me, Matt. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... Uh, that was that's a lot. That was a lot of fun. I, I would like to get it, you know... I'd like to be playing more, to be honest with you. Like, something really good live. It's... It, it's just you run into the feasibility of it and you know who who else are you gonna be playing with can they do it yeah this yeah scheduling in nashville with as busy as everyone is is truly like herding cats i i i, I was taught that phrase by chad cromwell and he's like this is like herding cats right because one time i was writing an article on the the session drummers of Nashville, you know what I mean? He's like, he's like, how are you going to get all these people together? And it turns out a lot of people couldn't make it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, oh, yeah, but, right. but yeah, man. Hey, look at this other little tidbit of information here. Apparently you were inducted in the fine arts hall of fame, Syracuse, New York. What was that all about? You're talking about the highest, my high school. This is uh, the, my parents. That's the most, they, that's the proudest they've ever been of me. My high school, they they just started doing like arts awards. They pick a few, you know, a year, and so now my picture's up in the high school forever. <laughs> and it was like, Dad, it's no big deal, and like they thought it was, you know, the bomb. So that's well, why I was glad. So that's well, you went out there into the real world and made made your your music dreams come true. Yeah. Came to Nashville. Who would have thought? Right? Did you? How did you end up here? My my New York wasn't really on the radar for me because the whole idea of of hailing a cab and schlepping your drums around the subway it's it seems like a very exciting young man's game and I I think to myself I could have done it but then I love the palm trees and the sunshine and the 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 ambition of California I love that thing a lot of my no I'm originally from Connecticut you know what I mean so like I had that kind of in my blood but then I moved to Texas when I was eleven got my education and wet my feet in texas and then i um started asking friends in dallas i was like look at i gotta get out of dallas i am 26 years old i'm playing in a top 40 band playing in jingles i gotta pick one of these cities and go make this thing happen so i started asking around who's looking for a drummer and a friend of mine got me to trisha yearwood's people so i auditioned for trisha's people the next playing, right? yeah oh yeah it was uh um johnny garcia was the band yeah, leader and, and still is and uh, then they, the next week, I auditioned for Dina Carter. And the next week, I auditioned for Barbara Mandrell. Three weeks in a row, maxed out credit cards with flights and rental cars and the whole food and the whole thing. And uh, three times in a row, I got the story. You sound great, kid. You should move here, but you do not live here. So we're giving the job to someone else. And so then I gave my band two weeks notice and I drove across the country with my old man. And, uh, got an apartment off of Edmondson Pike that I couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly met, uh, not met, re-met Jim Riley because we were friends in Dallas, Texas. And then we start living together and doing the thing. That was 1997, man. Isn't that crazy? You know, auditions, that's a whole nother, you know, I, 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 
I've never had good luck on, on auditions. Same thing, you know, they, they yeah. dig it. And it's like after, in other words, you do the audition, you think you did a good job. And afterwards, why did I even do that? You know, I know I can do the gig, just say, yeah. but whatever. But I remember I did one, my very first one was with Shelly West, oh. Dottie West. Yeah. Went there and played. And I, you know, you, when you're that age, you really learn the parts. You're trying to cop it exactly. His husband comes in. He's got this fur coat on, like John Lennon on the rooftop with a white, like a mink coat. And I'm like, what the? She gets up there. <laughs> She's like so stupid. Played, didn't get the gig. I didn't think I was country enough or something. You know, it's like, ah, audition. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a it's a perception thing, and you know you might yeah. be going in, and you know the bass player's already got a buddy that's kind of like almost already picked out, but they're just kind of going for a formality. But the thing that I have noticed, we we're talking about changes over the last four decades, even just since uh, twenty five years ago, there's not a lot of auditions. Everyone is just putting bands together, right? You know what I mean with their buddies, because ultimately that makes sense because they got to get along personally and professionally. They got to ride the forty five foot tube. That's what I always thought. I mean, even years ago, it's like, why? Are, I can't believe these guys don't know a lot of great players. Why are they only on audition? It's strange. Yeah. So, yeah, but I guess there's instances where that may, hey, yeah. we're just going to listen to a bunch of different guys. But yeah, uh, it's less. There's not. It's less. I don't hear about it. People are like, hey, keep your ears and eyes open for me. I'm like, I sure will. But really, it feels like the new model is. Knowing as many people as possible, being friendly with as many pe people as possible, um, and hopefully they would consider you if if an opportunity happens because they right. enjoy being around you. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. Sure, okay. you're good, and they like being around you. Yeah, you're. They have you to know. know. I mean, you've proven yourself, and in, in their eyes, you know, the unspoken reality prop may be like, ooh, he can. You know, I can expand my network through him right you know they want to bring someone in who is doing something yeah it's advantageous to everybody usually um i know well, after 40 years of doing it are you running into people on sessions new faces or is it is it oh, a sure. is it yeah. a i was going to say just the, the mutual admiration society where you walk in with your cup of coffee and everybody knows each other how's the boat how's the farm what's up how's the kids you know what i mean which is also very nice it is nice. You know, you sort of come up with the people you start out with. Yeah. That's really what it is. But yeah, yeah there's a new generation of younger guys, you know, that it's funny because like uh, two guys I'm thinking in particular, they're, I knew their parent, their their father well, like Jerry McPherson, Miles' dad. Oh, yeah. Hey, rest his soul. Ro. Hey. Yeah, rest his soul. I remember like when I probably jerry Rowe was probably nine ten years old yeah 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 oh my son's great yeah he's playing all right cool dave and, you know next thing you know boom jerry, like my son you know that's great so you know and then they come up and they they whoever they're working with producers and musicians but yeah there's a lot of new guys there's some and they're really good hi you know? and jerry and miles play their ass off they're super busy yeah. i remember that same conversation 1999 meet dave rowe because i'm playing yeah. in his wife's band at the time audrey malone and the rhythm kings and we're going for like a cherry pop and daddy's kind of big voodoo daddy remember that swing craze that happened oh. because of the movie swingers yes yes there was that movie swingers with uh john favreau you know and vince vaughn and it was all about that right. kind of like neo swing dance craze that came back around and so all these zoot suit timepiece wearing you know mini big bands were put together and i was playing drums in dave's wife's band at the time dave playing upright yeah, it was well she was an upright bass player oh i didn't know that isn't that crazy i did not know that yeah wow yeah but just to have like jerry reed as your grandfather oh yeah that. legacy oh wow. wow but yeah i mean <clears throat> hard work persistence keep doing it yep that's, don't stop. I don't know. Do you get enough? Don't stop until uh, otherwise you're in the back of the, the back of the line. Um. So hey, you were talking about Buddy Hyatt. You're about to go yes. do. A, is you doing a like a five o'clock session tonight? Is that Actually, what's happening? Bonnie Wilson's there all day, and he had he's leaving at like five or something. So Buddy said, hey, "Could you come in just 
sit in. It's fun. It's good because Lonnie's set up. We set up a lot, like so. It's always easy. It's a five piece. You got the two mounted up top, which is rare these days. I know. It is. Isn't that funny? Are you I, going tw 12, 13, 16, or is it 10, 12, 14, or what is usually it? Usually 12, 13, 14, probably. It's my guess. It's a house kid. It's at a um, uh, hilltop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Yeah, so you're... you're. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You're finishing the sentence. Uh, yeah, the, no, uh, the, you're talking about Tom Toms. It, it, it yeah, just, yeah. just yesterday, it's like... The, yeah, I want like do 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 and I walk out there and there's two tops. <laughs> you know, do 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 how am I gonna do it? You know, but you're right. A lot of a lot of it's just easier and you don't really you can obviously do it. Mm -hmm. But I forever rich, I wanted speaking of Neil, I, I would love to show up to a date with concert times. Wouldn't that be a hoot? Like six, Dude. eight, ten, twelve. Single. They're back. Their <laughs> concert toms are back in a big way. Everyone's easy. getting them. Like I'm gonna have to beg D DW for a couple. I think just to have. Oh, you need to get that. You need to get. You know, like, do 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 do. That'd be a play. Hey, so for just my, uh, just just to steal information from a guy that's on the scene, has been in the scene for forty years. What are you using? Um, for loops these days because believe it or not somebody that's been really busy and he, he's a guitar player told me you know what the kids are doing rich it's really fast i just have the machine app on my ipad i can just drag and drop these cute little loops and then i can email it to the engineer in the other room he downloads it puts it right on the grid and we're done it's so fast well i've done it with this with your with your phone yeah yeah absolutely you know what you really can do it's so simple. I mean, it's so accessible these days. Hey, we need a loop. So you can literally Google it. Drum loop. This BPM hip hop rock or, you know, and loop masters or something will come up. I've literally done that. For free. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it just comes down as a as a wave file at a particular well, BPM. Play it on your phone. Well, you, you need the dongle to, you know, from your iPhone. I got an iPhone. And just here, just record this. Record one bar and loop it. I don't really get asked for loops nearly like, God, there was a time where there was that Steve Brewster era where everyone was using those 12 bit dirty, you know, oh, yeah. the, spectrosonic the, kind of things, you know, have filters and stuff. Yeah. Or running them through a sans amp pedal. You know, I did one of the first help put loops on the map. Remember, remember this single Mrs. Steven Rudy? You Dude. Remember? Yes. And that that started with a loop I put together in my garage in Sylvan Park. That's you. Yes. Now, Man. Wayne, I gotta ask you something. Not everybody off the street's gonna notice this, but there's a two four bar in there and it flips the loop. You're right. Did did the producer say no. ow? We're fine. They didn't even say anything. They didn't know. No. It started out with banjo and loop. Right. So Yeah, it was a yeah. uh, it was kind of like a it was a stretch. It was a do da do do da do do. So when it got turned around, it's okay. Yeah, it was do do ga do do ga do do ga. I forgot. It was just it's just a loop that was pretty popular. I could, Dude, I'm no, sorry. that was a big deal because I remember my friend and colleague Brian Pruitt was playing with him live, and so we were all. That's right, he did do that. Yeah, we we're always asking each other, "Hey, what are you using to develop your loops? What are you using for playback?" And it was just like so many different things over the years. Um, but now I, I'm, you know, on the chance that you've got to create something very, very quickly, it seems like the machine thing is going to be the, I yeah. bought a machine, like a physical machine. And, but then you got to yeah. have all the, you got to have the interface and you got to have the cables. And it's like, right. maybe it's the way to go. It's just to email the loop to the yeah. engineer. I'm sure you've done that, haven't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. not yet. I'm thinking about doing that. Most of the stuff that I will do is I will play a loop on the it or some sort of Glenn Kochi type thing. You know what I mean? I'll play it for eight measures. They'll pick their favorite measure, right? We'll, you know, kind of right. put that on the grid. Or these songwriters are so crazy about the compositional nature of their almost completed song that we just use their loop that they have created oh, yeah. for the sure. demo. Yeah. But and sometimes it's, it's come more, the hip hop elements are stronger than ever now. They really I'm are. Country music, right? Yeah, with the hats, the trap hats. That yeah, the sprinkler. 
that. Yeah, but just 808 sounds. Yeah. I mean, you literally listen to, I mean, it's probably, this is a good question. What percentage of country hits are all program drums? I'm not talking about program real drums, which there's those too, which obviously is not a real drummer, like on Morgan stuff or what have you. It's just the way it is. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing, you know? Uh, strange, isn't it? A lot of your... A lot of Jason songs. Yeah, we use the songwriters, you know, the, the demos that come in are like fully, you know, fleshed out things. Right. And so we'll just take the songwriter uh, loop that, that's on the demo and then play on top of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Just I was just wonder. curious. I was just curious. So you're actually sometimes downloading license-free loops oh, yeah. from the internet. If they're not license-free, I mean, I know that's not, okay. I don't, I'm not a proponent of that. I'm not suggesting this, but yeah, literally, you know, anything you can play off your phone, if you have an output, just record that. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm one of those kind of guys. I've built whole tracks. I'll play you some time just off, just to show people, uh, lifting you know riffs or guitars you know have like pretty rock and stuff and just building tracks around and just cutting stuff up and turning into whole different songs yeah and you you know people are like wow that's really good Where'd you? i didn't i did that in my office really so w with that and advent of AI, ai that's a whole nother story uh stuff yeah. is going to be push a button and you have a song you kind of have to address that. You know, so funny thing, it is the elephant in the room. I have heard some it is. Some, some AI stuff, some AI, you could type in, you know, AI country pop song and this pretty good. You ever hear Bandmasters, that website? I think it, or Beatmasters. Uh -uh. This guy, this kid I'm producing just told me about that. I'm like, where did you get this track? Because he'd bring in his demo because it was, so it's, they, they sell tracks. Basically, it's it's a progression in song form. Yes. And for 1995, you can download this. So they download, they got a whole track. It's like this song, they just write songs around it. You know, 1465, 1465, go to the bridge, five, whatever it is. Like construction kits is what they call them. Yeah, it's yeah, basically. It's, yeah. it's all pre-done tracks. And uh, it's some of them are good enough to, yeah, okay, I can see this could make it to the radio. So... I know AI is going to be really strange. Only stranger, I mean. The thing that I don't like is that you can remove background images from photos. You could create a scenario in a photo where uh, it could it could ruin alibis. You know, like people are going to be falsely accused of crimes, like Minority Report. You know what I mean? It's like it's right here. I know. I know fake the fake uh the deep fake the deep fake it's true Crazy. yeah a friend of mine who does from hollywood guy went to eastman with actually um he just like whatsapp me hey we just did this thing with i forgot a big actress's name but we ran the computers for 20 for three days 24 7 and we got their voice and likeness down so now they don't need you know you've heard actors complaining about this in the big yeah but that's happening Oh, it's that is happening. not cool, man. I mean, I it, know it's not cool, but think about it. It's, uh, you know, you get enough of Jason Aldean's vocal alone. You can't tell you, know, then you can basically write lyrics and he'll sing those lyrics and it's Jason. And it's not, well, really, it, it is his voice, but manipulated to where it's, you know, with crossfades. Who knows? By robots. It's manipulated by I internet robots. You you do the Rich Redmond show. Hey, right? guys. Yeah, I'll be like, hey. <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> hey, lady. That's um, a, that is an elephant in the sense that music, you know, the gen creating is from a creation point, and it's, and it's an issue with the unions and everybody right now. Yeah. Well, how are we going to monetize this? It's moving so fast. Who knows? But yeah. they still You're right. need humans. I know. Live is, as of now, where you can actually st still be needed in the flesh and blood. Yeah. You know, we're going to need a drummer up there sweating, guys. Swinging and sweating. Swinging, yeah. swinging bats. Hey, so what do you do? Do you do anything with uh, 
you know, uh, for chop maintenance, you know, do you have like a little thing to warm up? You know, I find, you know what I find like when I'm doing sessions, it's such a energized room and you're, you're getting, you're saying hello to everybody and it's so on the clock. Sometimes I won't warm up as much as I do for live gigs, live gigs. I'll warm up for an hour before the show, Oh wow! Yeah. but sometimes I'll just, you know, for a session, I just do the thing, you know, where you got, you do some air diddles and sure. Air, not much. I, air I, flams. I phase where I started getting stiff. It's like, well, I'm not even warming up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but a stretch, I read Modern Drummer Magazine a long time ago. Was, and this really helps because I would get stiff in the forearms. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah. Right here, right? And you just pull down like that. That stretch, for some reason, really good bang for the buck. Nice forearm stretch, yeah. Yeah, nice forearm stretch. So that that helps a lot. And I mean, hell, Steve Gadd still like warms up for about an hour before he plays. So it's like he you know. loves he loves man. Have you checked out the new book, The Gadamits from Hudson? Oh. It's it's basically you know how when you're doing rudimental stuff, you want to do some sort of a paradiddle or something to throw it over to the other side of your body. So you're treating both sides of your body to the you know so you can develop both sides of your body like the stick control thing. Yeah, he's such an expert at that. So they, you know, Joe Bergamini and and Rob Wallace took the time to get together with Gad, and they wrote all of his cool, rudimental warm up stuff. He's so, very Swiss rudiments. Was, you know, I remember guys in Rochester. I always ask about Steve Gad. He's from there, and he went. Yeah, you're right. And like, oh, this thing's Swiss rudiments. So very much that both sides. Yeah, and strong. Yeah, right. That's going to be my backstage warm up routine this year. I'm going to be using. That cool. book and then a college a colleague of mine, Sean Kennedy, wrote a book called Oodles of Accents. And it's basically a measure of triplets or 12-8 and just shifting the accents, the, all the combinations of where you can accent a bar of triplets. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, a lot of things. He'll just turn stuff around. He was just doing, I saw a video, speaking of him, I saw a video the other day and it was like, whoa, you can, he just said something that, you know, well, you didn't realize that, Steve. You know, he's like, you can go da 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 da. Then time displaced, and he's got he he just got way off into that. And now that was his thing for a while. Yeah. And uh, you know, all the nuance and the subtleties. I think what for me what separates something I like and or would listen to and myself doing as opposed to someone like more of them has a mastery of it is the control of the quieter notes right you know what i'm talking about Dude, so you like, are speaking oh yeah it's like you know how, how do you like gab for some reason you know he looks just like everybody else he's relaxed but everything's it's really in time just feels good yeah. even the quiet stuff yeah so if you're doing that 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 that, that, that. This is all not like that. That, that, that is, is that, 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 you know, it, yeah. it's the it's little notes. It's, you know, I mean, David Garibaldi, another master with the oh, little, yeah. the little notes. Yeah. And, and, you know, I do a lot of teaching and that's pretty much, I say, look at kids. Drumming comes down to two things, accented notes and unaccented notes. And it's how you control and the unaccented notes that you're playing right now are not going to cut it. They're six inches off the head. They need to be one inch off. The head. It's a huge part. You don't realize. Yeah, you're right massive yeah. and they want to skip it they want to just get right on the get they just start double basing out and playing along with like right. you know dream theater records i'm like look at work on the hands while you're young oh, yeah. get it out of the way yeah exactly you know you know a lot of times <clears throat> nuances aren't necessary or they're lost but still you need it done right and with control that's that's a can be a big game changer in how you sound you know yeah i'm glad that you agree with me on that because that is that is the name of the game because even if they're lost you still have to have the ability to do it because it also affects the the articulation the percolation the feel the everything what's well, the you feel? Know. it's the in between notes that give you the feel right the in between notes man so speaking of gad who are some of your what are some of your lifelong love affair drummers Tony Williams. But I'll tell you what, the, the guy that right. he says, if I said, who's your favorite drummer alive today? If I had to pick, because it's stylistically, there's, there isn't, obviously, there's so many great players, but Bill Stewart, that guy just like, oh. <laughs> I mean, he is a matched grip 
modern that's good jazz. Too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I was like, oh my god, there's hope for me because I never learned traditional. I switched. I had a, I switched. Yeah, I was I was that good for yeah. you, man. But he, uh, yeah, the, the, I don't. He's born. He's like supernatural. I mean, you can't. I don't know how you become growing up, growing words from Utah or something. How do you develop that library and that ability? Yeah. Gosh, but he's he's wonderful to listen to. Peter Erskine's wonderful to listen to. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, Peter's great. You know, his daughter Maya is kicking ass as an actress. She really? is Maya in the new is. Mister and Mrs. Smith with Donald Glover. They remade it. You know, it was Brad. It was yeah, Brangelina. Yeah, that's her. They, that's her. She's a little action star now, and she does comedy. She does drama. She is uh, doing fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's I didn't know that nuts yeah there's a guy who's talk about uh being relaxed when you play and just having control well yeah family guy all the way to steely dan and then uh diane crawl steps ahead everything in between everything in between incredibly versatile drummer's drummer's drummer but you know i you know what i am rich i'm on you know my favorite instrument is electric guitar I swear to God, I'm a riff rock guy. Are you serious? I, I hear like just riff rock. I just love the shit. Out tricep of it. rock. Yeah. Where you get that I, tricep in there. You know just what I mean? The, it's the a hook, just the sound. You know, yeah. that, that's what's so fun about doing the Van Halen stuff. It's just all, it's that. You know, Zeppelin's all that. Sabbath is all that. That's 70s rock. And, and I always wanted that to come back. I wish it would. You know, rock is in the shitter. It is just not doing well. Um, and hey, you know, yeah. good for us. You know, in this, you know, three chords and a loop. Uh, we are we are crushing it. Oh, four, four chords. chords and a loop. Sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, on a good day. Yeah, you're right. One four six five. One four six five with the loop. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Or a combination or a variation of that. that yeah. Version exactly and then you bring into your sessions your shaker your tambourine maybe a little hand drum a little lp portable conga or something snares off oh you do that nice yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah you know buddy just i probably need to split this yeah is, man you've given us an 80 minutes of your again. time i'd love to talk to you some more no it's great and you and i just need to do this over um you know the coffee in person Let's yeah. do it. It's been way too long, you know, and you only get one life. You know, a lot of my friends are, it's crazy. We're, uh, you know, everyone's talking about buying their forever home and, and, and retiring. And like these, this, this is coming out of my friend's lips. I'm like, well, how is this happening? Where did the time go? Oh gosh. Know. You know, so we got to enjoy well, the well, moments. Let's do it. You know, yeah, man. Um, do you like to be found on the, uh, on the interwebs? There. If, if somebody wants to ask you a question, what's the best way for people to find you, buddy? Drumsloud at gmail.com. Drumsloud at gmail.com. Straight to Wayne's Straight inbox. To me. That's my go to inbox. That's really, yeah. Reach out. Dude, Don't I love it. You ask look, me about Neil Pert's drums. <laughs> it, 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 you look great. No. You got, you're, you're youthful. You got a full head of hair, great smile. You're, you're in your, you're in your craft. Um, your kids are successful. Congratulations yeah. on everything. Thanks for joining us here, man. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Really, really love it. Hey, that's Wayne Killius. Keep in touch with him. Drumsloud at gmail.com. If you guys love the show, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. We want all the drummers in the world to hear this show. All right? Until next time, hey, we'll be here. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Wayne. Peace out. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.